brought to you by Charity Mobile, the phone company that sends 5% of your monthly plan price to your favorite charity. No contracts, nationwide coverage, risk-free guarantee. Learn more at CharityMobile.com. We continued this week with the next portion of St. Vincent of Laren's seminal work, The Combinatory. You may not have heard of St. Vincent of Laren's. You'd be forgiven. He is one of several doctors of the church. He came onto my radar as someone appropriate for our time because, actually, Francis quoted him out of context and completely flipped the meaning of what St. Vincent of Laren's was saying. And he did this. This would have been a year ago or more now. I've been working on this about once a month for this channel for at least a year. But he used St. Vincent of Laren's to justify changes to doctrine and dogma. When, in reality, St. Vincent of Laren's was writing the combinatory to combat against heresy, against those who wished to change dogma and doctrine in the church, and warned us against people like Francis. There's a bit of an irony there, I suppose. But this work really is important, and it shows us what we're dealing with in our time. In the most recent um, installment of this series, I gave his portion, his sort of examination of origin, someone who people mistakenly call a father of the church. He can't be a father of the church because while he is still widely read and he was around with the fathers of the church, they were his peers, Origen died a heretic. And St. Vincent of Larens uses Origen as an example of of what can befall even the most seemingly holiest of men. And so we're going to hear from Origen what a true Catholic sounds like, and he's going to begin by warning us about what happened to, ter to Tertullian and what happened in his life and the dangers of, I guess, fame and everything else for the Catholic thinker, perhaps something we should all be wary of. But then he goes into the marks of what a true Catholic is, what distinguishes a true Catholic, There'll be words for us as we, you know, embrace this joyous season of Easter. So God bless. Tertullian, a great trial for the church. The case is the same with Tertullian. For as Origen holds by far the first place among the Greeks, so does Tertullian among the Latins. For who more learned than he, who more versed in knowledge, whether divine or human, with marvelous capacity of mind, he comprehended all philosophy and had a knowledge of all schools of philosophers and of the founders and of upholders of schools and was acquainted with all their rules and observances and with their various histories and studies. Was not his genius of such unrivaled strength and vehemence that there was scarcely any obstacle which he proposed to himself to overcome, that he did not penetrate by acuteness or crush by weight? As to his style, who can sufficiently set forth its praise? It was knit together with so much cogency of argument that it compelled assent, even where it failed to persuade. Every word almost was a sentence, every sentence a victory. This know the Marcians, the Apolices, the Praxes, their Hermogeneses, the elder brothers of ours, the heathens, the Gnostics, and the rest, whose blasphemies he overthrew by the force of his many and ponderous volumes as with so many thunderbolts. Yet this man also, notwithstanding all that I have mentioned, this Tertullian, I say, too little tenacious of Catholic doctrine, that is, of the universal and ancient faith, more eloquent by far than faithful, changed his belief and justified what the blessed confessor Hilary writes of him, namely that, quote, by his subsequent error he detracted from the authority of his approved writings. He also was a great trial in the church, but of Tertullian I am unwilling to say more. The only I will add, that contrary to the injunction of Moses, by asserting the novel theories of Montanus, which arose in the church, and those mad dreams of new doctrine dreamed by mad women to be true prophecies, he deservedly made both himself and his writings obnoxious to the words, If there arise a prophet in the midst of thee, thou shalt not hearken to the words of that prophet. For why? Because the Lord your God doth make trial of you whether you love him or not what we ought to learn from these examples. It behooves us then to give heed to these instances from church history, so many and so great, and others of the same description, and to understand distinctly, in accordance with the rule laid down in Deuteronomy, that if at any time a doctor in the church have erred from the faith, divine providence permits it in order to make trial of us, whether or not we love God with all our heart and with all our mind. 
the notes of a true Catholic. This being the case, he is the true and genuine Catholic who loves the truth of God, who loves the church, who loves the body of Christ, who esteems divine religion and the Catholic faith above everything, above authority, above the regard, above the genius, above the eloquence, above the philosophy of every man whatsoever. He sets light by all these and continually steadfast and established in the faith, resolves that he will believe that and only that which is sure the Catholic Church has held universally and from ancient times, but that whatsoever new and unheard of doctrine he shall find to have been furtively introduced by some one or another, besides that of all or contrary to that of all the saints, this he will understand does not pertain to religion, but is permitted as a trial being instructed especially by the words of the blessed Apostle Paul, who writes thus in his first epistle to the Corinthians, There must needs be heresies, that they who are approved may be made manifest among you. As though he should say, This is the reason why the authors of heresies are not forthwith rooted up by God, namely, that they who are approved may be made manifest, that is, that it may be apparent of each individual, how tenacious and faithful and steadfast he is in love of the Catholic faith. And in truth, as each novelty springs up incontinently, is dis discerned the difference between the weight of the wheat and the lightness of the chaff. Then that which had no weight to keep it on the floor is without difficulty blown away. For some at once fly off entirely. Others, having been only shaken out, afraid of perishing, wounded, half alive, half dead, are ashamed to return. They have, in fact, swallowed a quantity of poison, not enough to kill, yet more than can be got rid of. It neither causes death nor suffers to live. O oh, wretched condition, with what surging tempestuous cares are they tossed about? One, while the air are being set in motion, they are hurried whithersoever the wind drives them. Another, returning upon themselves like refluent waves, they are dashed back. One, while with rash pres presumption, they give their approval to what seems uncertain. Another with irrational fear, they are frightened out of their wits at what is certain, in doubt whither to go, whither to return, what to seek, what to shun, what to keep, what to throw away. This affliction indeed of a hesitating and miserably vacillating mind is, if they are wise, a medicine intended for them by God's compassion, for therefore it is that outside the most secure harbor of the Catholic faith they are tossed about, beaten, and almost ended by diverse tempestuous cogitations, in order that they may take in the sails of self-conceit, which they had with ill advice unfurled to the blast of novelty, and may betake themselves again to and re remain stationary within the most secure harbor of their placid and good mother, and may begin by vomiting up those bitter and turbid fl floods of error which they had swallowed, that thenceforth they may be able to drink the screams of fresh and living water. Let them unlearn well what they have not learned well, and let them receive so much of the entire doctrine of the church as they can understand. What they cannot understand, let them believe. That is St. Vincent of, Con of Larens in the Cominatory, telling us why God allows heresies in the church. That is the point of him telling us about Tertullian and about Origen and what happened to them despite their great minds and how their writings still 2,000 years or so later are still well regarded, so highly regarded in many cases. If you look up any collection of writings of the fathers, you will find their writings there, even though they are not strictly speaking fathers because they fell into error. It does answer that one question. Something I've been saying for some time. Why does God permit errors in the church, heresies and scoundrels in the church, in the hierarchy, perhaps the highest office in the church? Why? To illustrate to us that we have fallen into error, that we have imbibed of evils, accepted evil ideas. How many of us, myself included, have accepted secular values in some way or another and just ho-hummed at the church's teachings on certain things? find offensive some things the church has said. Think about it for a moment. Go, go through the syllabus of errors. I can't put the syllabus of errors on YouTube, not because it's spicy or anything. Its format doesn't really work for a video because everything is, it's, you know, a list of propositions that are condemned. It's all it is. So it doesn't really work. But among them are very core American and Western values today. Many people bristle when they're told the church condemned them. And perhaps we will deal with these heresies in the church until enough Catholics wake up, repent of these errors, and get on our knees and ask God to send us 
the Holy Pope of Restoration. We won't get the Pope we deserve until we deserve it. The Pope we need until we deserve it. This is why I don't hold much hope for a coming con you know, conclave. At best, you'll get a moderate, which is the last thing the church needs right now. Anyway, let me know what you thought of this in the comments, please. Again, this is St. Vincent of Laren's Combinatory. We still have a ways to go in it, but we're nearing the end. Let me know what you thought of this, and uh, like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help, as does sharing this on social media. That helps a lot, too. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.